Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this brand spanking new pair of individually calibrated Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro headphones along with Sonarworks' Reference 4 software plugin. So for the past 10 years or so, I've actually been using my trusty pair of AKG K240 Mark IIs because, well, I used them for so long because I, I, I learned how they sounded and um, I became really comfortable mixing on them uh, because I knew how mixes translated from these to uh, different devices. But I felt it was time for a bit of an upgrade um, I wanted to improve how my mixes sounded and um, yeah, just um, thought I'd treat myself to a new pair. I was looking around at various headphones, obviously there's loads of different options and loads of different reviews and opinions online, um, but I got pointed in the direction of Sonarworks. So I was literally told anything from Sonarworks with the individual calibration along with the reference software um, is a good shout. So here we are. So before we go any further, I just want to make a small disclaimer that um, my knowledge of all this technology is fairly limited. So uh, please feel free to uh, correct anything that I get wrong in the comments and ask any questions um, because I'm trying to take a look at this from a composer's point of view rather than a technical point of view. I'm sure we can all agree that um, different pairs of headphones sound different. Different manufacturers sound different, different models sound different. But something that I didn't really uh, appreciate is that if I had another pair of these DT770 Pros, even, even those two pairs, even though they're exact same make and model, would actually have a slightly different frequency response. And what I mean by frequency response is effectively how they colour the sound um, from coming out of your interface or whatever to your ears. Even different pairs of the same make and model have a different frequency response. And you're going to notice that I'm looking over at my script a lot because some of this is quite complicated. So I just want to make sure I try and uh, get this across to you as clearly as possible. So what Sonarworks can do is, uh, with their reference for software, is provide a average profile that corrects the frequency response across a range, basically. But even this has its limitations because, as we said earlier, different pairs of the same make and model will be slightly different. And I guess that's, uh, I guess that's like a, a physical limitations as well as, I guess it's kind of like how they say, um, you know, if you're going to buy a guitar to always go to the store and play it because even the same ones that are supposed to be the same feel different. So what the individual calibration is, is effectively Sonarworks will take a bunch of complicated and scientific measurements of the of your exact pair of headphones and using those measurements they will create a custom individual calibration profile which you can then download from their server into the reference for software um, which will correct the frequency response of your headphones to be as flat as possible. Uh, it's worth noting at this point that the uh, the calibration is pointless unless you're also going to buy the software because they don't actually make any physical changes to the headphones themselves. Um, the reference for software allows you to uh, make use of the calibration profile that they make from the measurements they take. <laughs> Stick with me. It's also worth noting or worth remembering that this isn't for this isn't to get a better listening experience. This is really intended to make mi your mixing decisions more accurate because What's effectively happening is you're negating any coloration or any alteration that your headphones might be doing to the actual sounds that you're mixing and inputting. Because all sound systems sound different, it kind of makes sense to make something uh, that doesn't have any of that um, impact on what you're working on because then it's just the it's the most accurate version then of what you're mixing. Majority of sound systems have um, a coloured uh, frequency response, which basically means that um, they mostly have 
a um, boosted low end, so you get a really powerful punchy bass, which obviously everyone likes to listen to, and you also get an enhanced uh, kind of more exciting sparkly top end. So you have this like smiley face EQ effectively, and what the calibration does is negate that. So according to the Sonarworks website, for ultimate accuracy, Sonarworks's individual calibration is the way to go. It is the only service of its kind on the market as the calibration is tailored specifically for your pair of headphones. So when you buy the individual calibration service, you get a correction profile that is completely unique to your set of headphones. It's, there won't be another one like it. While you also get stereo correction where the left and right channels are calibrated separately to eliminate any stereo imbalance. You also get a guaranteed precision of 0.9 decibels across the spectrum compared to the average three decibels. So that's a considerable difference. Before we go into um, the calibration of these headphones anymore, I'll just quickly take you through why I chose this pair. Right out of the box, the sound is phenomenal. I don't think I've heard headphones that sound this good from putting them on and just pressing play on the first thing on my Spotify and just being like, that That sounds really nice. There's a really noticeable uh, greater clarity across the spectrum. The sound is much more focused. It feels like it, you're, you're right there in it. And also one of the main things was, as you see, I've been fiddling with them the whole time. Uh, these, um, I think if you can see, the cushions on the either side, you can see how soft they are. And I guess um, any of you out there who wear glasses will know the pain of having the arms of your glasses being pressed into your temple for hours on end when you're wearing headphones. Also, you know, bare dynamic German, can't really go wrong. Uh, one thing I'm not keen on is the way the wire is built in here. On uh, some of my other headphones, you can detach it, which I think is good for when you're stuffing them in your backpack and traveling, because I kind of get worried that that might get damaged over time, this join, but it does feel quite strong. And it does also come with a trusty screw on uh, jack converter. So you can mini jack put in your laptop and then 3.5 or whatever the measurement is larger jack to go straight into an interface. Okay, so let's take a look at the Sonoworks reference for software. So we have our frequency response here in the middle and the red line going across is our target. So let's look at, so we enable the before curve. This is the frequency response of this pair of headphones. Uh, you'll probably be as shocked as I was when I saw this, but if, so we're looking here, say this is what, about 80 hertz? We've got a six, maybe seven or eight decibel boost around like 60 to 100 hertz. And that's massive, that's just such a surprisingly large amount of bass boost. Now I guess we're kind of relatively flat across most of the mids and then you've sort of got these real upper mids being dipped here slightly and then another substantial boost at the top end we're looking at i mean that that's what nine decibel boost almost around 10 11 12k i was really surprised by this i thought that headphones like this would be like almost completely flat but not the case so we put the calibration curve on future editing max here just wanted to make it abundantly clear that the curve I just loaded, the calibration curve, is in fact my individual calibration. And it's effectively a mirror image of the blue before curve, so where we were getting that big bass boost and big treble boost here, it's reversed, and then again these mids are then being boosted. So then if we put the simulated after, which says the actual frequency response that you are getting after the calibration is applied to your system, then there we go. You can't even, I'll take off the target curve so you can see it more clearly. It's, it's flat. Um, I guess there's a tiny bit of wibbly wobbly down here, but yeah, I don't think that is going to be an audible thing. So yeah, that, that, that is what 
the calibration does and you can see how detailed the curve is um, I can tell you when you load the average profile in it's a much smoother curve it doesn't have all the nuanced detail in the response so yeah I'm using I'm currently using the system-wide version of the plugin so everything that comes out of my computer is going through this um, and you can disable and enable down here um, there's also a based boost and tilt now these two options down here I don't actually know that much about so again feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, but I guess if you want to mix with a slightly enhanced bass, um, you can add as much uh, bass boost as you like. And you can also tilt here as well. Um, so I guess that's maybe more for like EDM producers who wanna mix with that enhanced bass. You can dial that in as much as you like here. And then you've also got these predefined target curves and this I really don't know much about this so apologies but I believe the X curve well it says there yeah is for um, movie theater sound target as recommended by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers and many large movie theaters are calibrated this way and then you've got the B&K 974 speaker target which I just I don't really please let me know in the comments what that is about so yeah you can you can able, enable that I think, I don't know, I might start playing around with this because I really do miss that bottom end, but maybe that's just me being a bit of a bass junkie. You also have this safe headroom that you can enable because it's uh, there's so much boosting and stuff going on. Um, it just um, prevents any overload. And you also have a mono. And you can also uh, mix between dry and wet, which is quite interesting if you're playing some music you can slowly bring in the calibration like that and you can hear how it's changing um, there's also some like latency things down like you can change the latency but i've not had any issues with that so i've not had to play about with that um, i will be getting the full i'm just using the trial because i'm a cheapskate but i will be uh, purchasing the the full plan so i have a full version but i believe it works in the same way so yeah that that is what is going on for these headphones right there uh, i just find that fascinating I'd be really interested as well to see another pair of 770s, how different they actually are. But um, so yeah, if anyone else has a calibration for a pair of 770s, um, let's some um, share screenshots because I think that'd be really interesting. So what I've realised from going down this route and making this video and kind of researching this a bit is that well, I guess nothing you can listen to music on any audio system doesn't offer a completely flat frequency response and. I guess that's a mixture of physical limitations, you know, that the drivers themselves in the headphones, and also, I guess, like, um, you know, what people actually like to listen to, which is not necessarily a flat response, because as we said earlier, it's not the most exciting way to listen to music. You don't get that enhanced, powerful bass and that sparkly, exciting top end. But I think what you have to remember is that the top end mix engineers and, and top end mastering engineers, that work on the majority of music that we all listen to will be listening on the flattest possible system in an acoustically treated room with the best monitors and um, the best headphones so it makes sense to try and replicate that listening environment for ourselves it's going to take me a while to get used to mixing with the calibration turned on because it is it's almost like we're or I am conditioned to listen to music with the bass and top end boost because when I initially, if I'm listening to something and I enable the calibration, I immediately want to di to um, disable it because I prefer how it sounds without. But if you really sit there and listen for a good five to ten minutes, I do feel like it does sound more realistic and i guess that's because i'm listening the sound i'm most familiar with is the sound of an orchestra in a room and i guess when you listen to like a film soundtrack you have like a hyper realistic uh, version of what the orchestra sounds like whereas with this it kind of takes away takes that away and really just lets you hear you know how it was intended to be heard i guess i hope i'm making some sense by the way <laughs> spoken to a couple of friends who have um, the same product from Sonarworks and they said 
that if you stick with it, it's worth it. It's quite a change to start with, but um, your perception of it will eventually swap around and you'll think, how on earth did I ever mix without calibrated headphones? So like I said, the difference is really quite striking, but I think it is the way to go to try and improve my own mixes because obviously I work in the box a lot. Um, it's quite important to have good sounding mixes. So I, I feel this is, this is going to be the way to go. I'm really looking forward to getting to know these headphones more and getting used to the software and hearing that difference. Um, and I definitely recommend checking out the Sonoworks website. You can go on and they have like a, an example thing that you can click on. You can hear it for yourself. I won't play any examples for you because obviously you don't have this exact pair of headphones so you won't really get the accurate representation but on their website there is like a demo that you can go and listen to which is quite cool so as always um, feel free to leave a like on the video if you like this kind of content and feel free to subscribe for similar content yeah but let me know if you guys out there if you have these headphones as well let me know your experiences and I hope that uh, this was an interesting insight and yeah I would definitely recommend heading over to the Sonarworks website and checking this out because I think it might be a bit of a game changer for me, but we shall see. Anyway, I'll see you guys for the next video.